Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome you to my new 2021 Zen Tangle Challenge. We are going to find out how many days of tangling we can do in 2021. We have already accomplished 100 days. So this is day 101 and we're going to find out what happens. Okay, for today, I'm going to be tangling on a Renaissance Phi tile. If you will, if you will remember, these measure 3.2 inches by 5 inches, or 8 centimeters by 12.8 centimeters. And uh, again, day 101. So what I'm going to be doing for the next uh, few days is I'm going to be exploring Project Pack 11 by Zentangle. And you can watch those videos for free here on YouTube, which is pretty awesome. And I have divided my tile up using this Marcus Operandus that came with the Project Pack 11. But you guys do not need to worry about having one of these, although there is a free PDF download that you can print out on your own if you would like uh, on Zentangle.com. So just look for Project Pack 11 there and it will have a free P PDF download uh, with it. Okay, so, uh, but for those of you who don't have one of these, I have a very easy way to do this. So what I want you to do is set your thumbnail on your tile twice and make a little mark there, okay? And then down on the other side, or on the other end, again, two thumbnails is gonna get you about where you wanna go. Now, they reiterate in the project pack over and over that you don't have to be exact with this, that this is like a string. These are suggestions, and the whole point of this is, is finding that proportional sweet spot, as they call it, for uh, the divine, um, the divine sequence, okay, or divine proportion. So anyway, so going down, what you need is three thumbnails for your first line, then two thumbnails, second line, and then there should be about three thumbnails left on the bottom. So see, not hard. And you can see mine aren't drawn perfect. Again, this is just to help us sort of know where we want to start. Okay, now this, um, this video is um, a new perspective or a different perspective, if you like, on the original um, day one Project Pack 11 video in which they used this setup to do poke root. Um, and I have an example of that. All right, so I didn't quite finish this, but this is... Um, this is the the basic uh, what they did in the project pack and and on on this one instead of using my chalk pencils um, I used uh, some tinted graphite that I got from Nancy Gregg thank you Nancy which uh, was very interesting uh, um, I found it well we'll talk about it later um, we might use it today we'll see all right so what we did on this was to basically draw some poke root in in um, some spots going up this line, this line right here, right? And uh, then sort of fill in around that. And so what I wanna do is, is I wondered if we change the tangle up if that would if that would be as effective or what would happen and I'll tell you quite frankly I don't know you're going to find out the same time I do which is when we get finished today okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out my tangles and I'm going to use um flux and poke leaf for mine okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in some poke leaf which is exactly the same as poke root, only uh, with a little leaf shape on the top with a little point. And I'm going to start this stem 
right on this line, okay? And then I'm going to come from over here. And again, these don't have to be perfect. All right, and I'm gonna put my little cap on. And I'm gonna draw a poke leaf with a little point. Like this, all right? And I'm gonna go up here just a little bit and I'm gonna draw another one. Put a little hat on it and draw a poke leaf with a little point. Okay, I'm gonna go up here to this next cross and I'm gonna put in another one. Starting on the line, going a little past, putting my little cap on. And I know I didn't mention it, but clearly I'm using a brown pen today. Wow, good job, Cindy. And I think I'll do one more, just like they did in the project pack video with the poke root. Right there, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna draw in this line. Okay. I might want to draw this a little straighter than I drew that string line. And that's fine. Okay. And I think I'll leave this top off the way we did in the video. And now I'm going to aura that. I'm going to make my aura about the same width as my stems here. It won't be exact, but uh, it'd be all right. Now, on the video, uh, they then started adding shoots coming out of here of poke root, right? And so um, what I thought might be fun and interesting to do would be to add in some flux as, in addition to some poke leaf, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. And again, I have not tried this, so I don't know if it's going to work or not, but uh, let's find out. So I'm going to do a little stem of flux here. Rick's version of flux. All right. And this is a very fluffy organic pattern, so this should work. Anytime I come to a line, I'm going to draw behind. Okay. And if I want to put in a little poke leaf, too, I can. By just putting that little cap on. And I'll just put a, draw that a little bit behind. So in this way, I'm going to fill in around here and see what I end up with, okay? The flux may be an interesting addition to this. I don't know. What we want is uh, to try to pack this in pretty densely. Oops. Good job on the densely, Cindy. <laughs> and I'll just continue to occasionally work in a little poke leaf along with my flux. All right, and we're going to see how it looks. Again, I'm going to play to the overlapping. That's always um, positive or usually a positive thing. Okay. And if 
I want to and I have a little spot, I'm just going to tuck a little orb in there. And down here, same, put in an orb. Now in the um, Zentangle Project Pack 11 Day 1 video, which is what we're doing, uh, or my version of that, and um, they just inked in all these spaces, but no reason we can't put some little orbs in there if that's what we want to do. It doesn't have to be exact. Doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Doesn't have to be exactly like theirs. Just make it make it what you want. Let your pen guide you. Make it what your pen wants to do, right? So I think this is going to be an interesting mix of things. I don't know in the end if it will be effective, but we're going to try it out. You know, I like to do that. I like to try things out. So let's put an orb in here. And let's see if we can sneak a little flux in. And that line coming up the middle can sometimes really help um, accentuate what we're trying to accomplish. <laughs> it looks a little uh, looks a little crazy. I I don't I don't mind saying you know about the ugly stage and such. We have been having uh, thunderstorms and uh, lots and lots of rain. And uh, hopefully that's not going to interfere with the uploads. And if we don't get this uploaded okay, then uh, we'll do live stream tomorrow on Monday. But with any hope, with any help, we will have it. Day 101. What do you guys think of that? Whoops. Special shout out and hello to all of my Zenders. If you are a Zender and you have not um, joined our Facebook group, I really encourage you to do that. That is where I leave updates and notes and and. Uh, stuff like that for you guys. It is it is called Cindy's Zenders, and you have to be able to spell my name right in order for this to work. C Y N D E E. Although you might be able to look up. Oh, I think there's another. There's something else that's called Zenders. Oh, I don't know. Probably can't probably can't trademark it, but <laughs> we'll use it. Um, all right. Hmm. Okay, we're going to reserve our opinions for uh, later. We're still at the just work through it stage. Well, I think I'm going to put in another poke root or poke leaf. It's amazing I can ever keep those straight. I see them in my head that just what comes out my mouth is not the right thing. It's 
So I am very excitedly awaiting my new turntable uh, easel. It has got a handle on the side and it's got a little um, storage area inside it to uh, keep my pens and such, which is very exciting. And uh, when I get it, I will show you guys what it looks like. I am hoping that it is quieter than the one I've got and won't make that clicking noise. And I lay my hand down on it. I always forget to put the stop in mine so that it won't click or turn for that matter. All right, where are we? <laughs> this is gonna be fun. This is going to be fun. Just take your time. I managed to sneak in flux. <laughs> That's okay. I kind of needed a flux. I think this may end up with some fescue as well. I like it. I'm actually enjoying it. It's not as smooth as doing a uh, flux on its own, but uh, it's an interesting mix. And I think some fescue and some more orbs and here and there, that's gonna be interesting. So let me see what else we can do over here. Ooh, that one got loud. All right. Sending my love to everybody today on a Sunday. Of course, you may be seeing this on Monday. I'm just not sure how that's going to happen. Or it might be a Tuesday video. Maybe I need to not say days. That might be better. <clears throat> um. Mm. Guess I felt like it needed more up there. That's all right. All right. There we go. I love poke leaf. <clears throat> I think even more than poke root, which, and poke root is a great tangle. Get 
getting a little sloppy, so I need to slow down. And I'm just inking between these if I've got room, if I don't have room for an orb. And that's a good spot for inking. All right, don't get distracted, Cindy. I like the decorating part at the end the most. Well, shading is pretty awesome too. That got thick. That's all right, though. <laughs> this is my very own misshapen guy. That's all right. Okay, let's see. So just fill in wherever you think it will look good. I know this makes you guys that are gritters um, have, it, have issues. But deep breath. You draw a teardrop shape. It's going to be okay. All right. See what else.
yeah I think this is gonna work pretty well what do you guys think I wasn't sure but I sure did want to try it I think this is gonna be great let's see Any little spots you feel like need orbs, just go ahead and put them in. <laughs> Nothing like snoring dogs to make you smile. All right, let's see. I need something in here. I just can't decide what. I don't know what it is about rainy, stormy days that makes me so chill or quiet, <laughs> but they do. I guess it's because the sound of rain is soothing. It's the sound of thunder and lightning and stuff hitting the ground <laughs> that is not so soothing. Let's see. Let's put another poke root or poke leaf. Oh, sigh, I can never get those right. Can't believe I just said, oh, sigh, I'm turning into my child. I know that's somewhat normal, but goodness. You know, I kind of like it a little wilder and crazier than than the, the poke root one, but... Um, It's certainly different. <laughs> I think I'll put another one right here. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, Molly did this on her poke root. Let's see if it'll work with a poke poke leaf. Yeah. I like it. Ah, that'll work. All right, so uh, as Molly calls it um, in the project pack video, it's time to, to give this some love. So line weight rounding all the way around. If you want to add an orb someplace, go for it.
just rounding off these little edges. I can put orbs in here if I want, but I don't have to. Let's do. <laughs> Now's the time to let your creativity shine. The rounding does really give the edges a finished look, which I love. Like I said, anywhere you want to add an orb, you can. You can add none if that's what makes you happy. I want to encourage you guys to go off and do your own thing. I know a lot of you have, have uh, had the courage to do that in a big way, and I'm proud of you. So proud of you. What I really want is to give you inspiration and ideas and have you just do your own thing. But copycats are welcome. <laughs> Somebody in chat called themselves a copycat. I don't consider it copycatting. I consider it uh, reproducing an art lesson. You know, you can redo the same things over and over again. The same tiles with the same tangles and the same instructions and come up with something different each and every time. And if you find yourself in, in a position like what I do, which is, which is constantly redoing or, or tangling the same tile again, then uh, that is good practice. It's good practice in challenging yourself to do things differently. And I like that. I like to be challenged. That is, that is one of my fault slash good points is that I, I really like, I get bored easily. So, um, I like to be challenged. And so if you're anything like me, and I know a lot of you are a lot like me, uh, does this need something here? Um, Didn't really mean to bring this to the top, but there you go. We have arrived there at the top. It's a little messy, but um, I kind of like it. I just had an idea. I think I want to, um, where do I want to put that? Like that. <laughs> there we go. Um, like I said, I get distracted easily. So I enjoyed Friday sleeping all day. I totally did while Mari was in school. I slept till noon. And then got up and went, wow, why am I not doing anything? And then uh, Saturday, I uh, was working on the Flex Tangle lesson. And finally...
got to this video on Sunday and whether or not I have trouble uploading it or not we'll find out all right let's round these again Since we're using a Renaissance tile, these little orbs are gonna be awesome. They'll look, be little bright points in this tile. It'll just really pretty it up. Because again, decorating and my favorite thing. You know, we were talking in the Zoom, in the last Zoom meeting, somebody was talking about um, you know, as soon as they get the, as soon as you see the blank tile, they're like, yeah, I don't know. And I, and I totally get where you're at when we were talking about the, uh, whether you copy what somebody else does or do your own thing. And I, I was at that point myself, not so long ago, where I needed somebody else's inspiration in order to, um, you know, get anywhere myself. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, Always try, you know, to put maybe one thing in your tile that that you didn't see someplace else. Just one thing to call it your own. But sometimes it takes, you know, years of practicing over and over. And and you you develop your own style eventually. And um you know, I recognize, like, for example, I recognize Jenna Black's um, art. I always recognize Annie's art because it's very, it's always very unique. And uh, some of you, I'm starting to recognize yours. Uh, Ellen uh, from uh, Zen Clover is one I generally recognize as soon as I go, oh, look at that. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is Zen Clover. <laughs> So, way to go, Ellen. I hope you are doing well. I hope all of you guys are doing well. They have lifted the mask restriction in the U.S. for, for people who have been vaccinated fully. So I got to go in a store yesterday with no mask, which made me extremely happy. You know, and everybody has been talking about, well, what about the people that haven't been vaccinated? Well, you know, um, I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about me and, you know, they, they should still be wearing their masks. And if they're not, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you get vaccinated. I am frustrated today. I tried to have a talk about vaccinations with my Tori. She went on a trip out of town and I, of course, am worried about her and the boys. And, and um, it's tough to be a single mom and take your toddlers out of state on a trip. But um, that's what she did. She wanted to see her, her family. So she went home and, uh, God bless her. Um, she she has bought all of the all of the lies, you know. I mean, she said thousands of people have died from taking the vaccine. That's just not true, at least not in the U.S. And I don't know about other places. Um, how about you guys, uh, different places? Have have you guys had a lot of deaths um, due to vaccines where you are? I would be, I would be very interested to know that, um, because I know that's not true here in the U.S. And it irritates me that people are spreading those kinds of lies. You know, they'll take one isolated incident from one place, like. Um, uh, you know, they, they paused the Johnson & Johnson vaccine here. It was causing issues, but, you know. But still, everyone with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine here has been fine.
That's not to say that that um, some people haven't felt some side effects from the vaccine, but goodness, it's better than getting sick. You know, so my sister and her husband both had COVID and didn't have any problems. As well. Most of my family has had it and hadn't had any problems. But, um, and that's fine. But some people got COVID and got really sick. I wasn't talking about the vaccine. I was talking about COVID itself. And my medication nurse was one of those people. She and her husband both had it and they both almost died. So, you know, and she says to people that won't take it, she says it's better than getting the COVID because it's, it's awful. It's awful. All right. Well, <laughs> I think I over, I overworked my little guy down there, but he's okay. I want to add something right here because it's empty space and I just need to let go of that. So let go, Cindy. So let me do some inking down here real quickly and we will get ready to play with some color today not much a little bit so uh i got a set of beautiful um um gra tinted graphite uh on from nancy Gregg. it's a set of spectrum noir and uh we're gonna we're going to take those for a ride today. Uh, I really enjoyed making my swatches with them. When it came down to using them on a tile, I was a little disappointed. Uh, but um, we're going we're gonna to try this. So this is what I've got so far. Let's turn it so you can see it. Right? So pretty cool. And it's not the same as what they did, but, you know, I'm okay with that. I like the fact that it's a little bit different. So the next thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, is think about whether I want to go ahead and shade with graphite first or go ahead and use the um, tinted graphite first. So let me see. So these are called uh, Color Tint by Spectrum Noir. They are tinted graphite pencils, okay? And uh, these are the colors that I have. Now, let me find my swatch sheet and show you what I ended up with. This is a 12 set, I believe. Yeah, it's a 12 set. And uh, these are the swatches. Let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. So rust, caramel, coffee au lait, and maize down here at the bottom are awesome colors. Uh, once you activate them with water, they uh, are, work out beautifully. The greens are a little blah for me, but they're tinted graphite, so what am I wanting? <laughs> well, I'm wanting my... Um, my um, uh, ink tints. Uh, the Vintage Rose is nice, but that's what I used on my um, tile, my sample tile here, and it ended up being too light. Now I can add more, I know, but uh, I ended up wanting to add, um, so I got my ink tints out, yeah. So anyway, so the blues aren't bad. They've got this uh, blueberry, which is which is pretty nice. This ocean, which has a little bit of green in it, and this Rockwell, which is supposed to be blue. Uh, it's more of a um, more of a indigo, I would say. More more of something with a little black in it. Okay. So olive green, I think, is the only one I haven't pointed out. What, what got me excited, though, were these three colors and the maize, because these are going to be perfect for um, Renaissance tiles. So, <laughs> let's see what we got here. Now, uh, if I start with these, I can always add, um, I can always add uh, my graphite shading at the end. Let's see what I've got here. This is the maze. Definitely might want that. It's the caramel. 
And here's the cafe au lait. And here's the rest. So these are the colors I think are going to work really well with my tile. I'm I'm all about these these um tan colors that go well with with the Renaissance tiles. So let's give this a try. Thank you so much, Nancy, for the ability to try these out. I really, really appreciate that. That was so thoughtful of you. All right. So uh, in my swatches, I really like the rust. I think the rust is going to go well. But I also think the caramel and the cafe au lait. But I think, I think maize and rust are the ones I want to try. And so what do I want to do with them? the question. So I think I'm going to put some of this rust um, I think I want to try this at the base of my flux. Now these were a little hard to get used to. Um, they're not sharpened to a point uh, very well, so I have used my my um, my sharpener from Generals for my pastel pencils for this. And where's my aqua brush? Let's blend these out and see what we end up with. Now these tint, these colors, these tinted graphites um, tend to be very subtle with their colors, and uh, when you blend them in, that that color is is much more subtle, I would say, than a watercolor. Now this isn't anything you can't do with a watercolor or a watercolor pencil if that's what you like. You certainly may. You see how well this color goes with the Renaissance tile. Yeah, definitely I like that. So I don't know if you guys can tell what that looks like, but it works pretty well. Let's zoom back in here. I've never used these uh, on wet before, so I'm curious. What that's like. We'll try that again when it's when it's freshly wet or damp. These are very much these go on very much like colored pencils. They dull out pretty easily as far as the tip goes. Now remember, depending on the color, sometimes pencils can, can behave very differently. So you always want to swatch them out if you can uh, before you use them, even if it's just to swatch out the pencil that you're thinking of using. That's always a good plan. Because, as you know from watching me, sometimes unexpected things happen. So, I am already in love with this rust color.
So uh, this is how I would go about shading this with a graphite pencil, which again, I may still come in and darken this in spots. Let's just wait and see. So be sure you keep your schedules where uh, you will be aware if we do live streams this week, um, depending on, of course, weather and, and such. Uh, we'll see how things go, but I definitely want to do at least one and hopefully more than that. Uh, I won't lie, I'm really tired, <laughs> but uh, I'm afraid if I stop altogether, then I won't ever get back up. So we're going to try not to do that this year. Hopefully we can, we can avoid any ice storms and other problems. Of course, storm season in Oklahoma is here. It's tornado season now. And uh, so we have to really be careful and watch the weather closely at this time of year as we get a lot of tornadoes and we have a lot of uh, weather patterns where tornadoes can jump up uh, unexpectedly. Now we have the best uh, weather forecasters in the world, I think, here in Oklahoma. And so we're very lucky uh, to have really good. I'm always, I'm always appalled at the level of forecasting that goes on in other places. I'm like, but they, they didn't show us the radar. They, 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 didn't, they didn't explain what the clouds were doing. I mean, what kind of work, what kind of stuff is this? You know, they'll tell you the temperature and if it's raining, and you know, that's pretty much it. You know, we have, we Oklahomans, we're used to detailed weather reports with all kinds of information in them. And so uh, we have definitely been spoiled. We, we never have a weather person on that is not a, a meteorologist. And like I said, the National Storm Center is, is uh, in the town where I grew up in Norman. And so we have uh, lots and lots of schooling that goes, education that goes on for meteorology around here. So, and we have a lot of storm chasers in this area because our, our weather in Oklahoma is crazy this time of year. Oh yeah, that's beauty mall. And you can use this without, but I did want to try to blend this um, with a tortillon, I don't think it's going to work. So, not really. You can do a bit. You can smooth it a little but not it will not be nearly as effective as using water with it as long as you um you know don't make a mess <laughs> so let's activate all of this with water see where we end up i need my napkin always keep a paper towel napkin tissue something available if you're going to use an aqua brush you guys know I love these. <laughs> these are my favorite things, aqua brushes, I mean, because they allow me to do wet media uh, from bed. And so that's cool. Oh, this is nice. I really like this. Thank you again, Nancy, for letting me try these out. Now you can use colored pencils, you can use um, watercolor pencils, you can use watercolor itself, you can use your ink tints, you can use any, you can use markers, any water-based media, and you're gonna be able to do this to a lesser or greater extent, depending on what paper you're using. Now, if you're using a box back, um, those will take 
some water depending on uh, what it's made of but um, you know this should still work if you're using an aqua brush and you're not saturating the paper too much then then you're probably going to be all right uh, which is another reason I love these uh, because you control how much water you use and uh, that makes it nice Now I may not need to add any graphite here, although some might be really effective. I always struggle putting graphite over my pretty colors, but I have learned from any that sometimes it's just necessary to shade your your beautiful art. And sometimes you just gotta go over it. <laughs> and sometimes you just gotta suck it up. It's tough. It's tough when you spend time uh, coloring something beautiful and then, and then you gotta put uh, that ugly old gray graphite over it, but um, it really makes such a difference in the effectiveness of what you're working on. Nice. This is a lovely color. It's not, it's pretty red or reddish. It's got a lot of reddish tones in it, but it's not so red. It's not like a Tuscan red red. Uh, where it's uh, more red than brown. Now, I, I had planned to perhaps put some maize yellow up in the tips, excuse me, um, but I haven't, this is so effective, and if I just, if I just highlighted those with some white chalk, uh, that might be really, really effective, so I'm not quite sure yet uh, how I'm going to handle that. It's nice to have, it's nice to have more than one thing to go to. But uh, again, colored pencils will work very well for this, uh, what I'm doing. Just a darker color in your, in your base and sort of feathering that out and um, covering the tip with white or a lighter color is always a good plan. I need to put some more in on these. And just by adding even a little bit, let me zoom back out, even by adding just that little bit of color in the flux, uh, we've got something really cool. Now I do think I'm going to use graphite to shade, otherwise my poke leaf is going to be completely lost. All right, let me let this dry for just a moment. I'm trying to decide. Oops. So here is the maze, which is a pretty light um, brownish yellow. Sorry about my gurgling belly. It has just gone to town today. So how about if I just put a little bit of this on the fronts of these poke leaves and let's see what that looks like. Do I want a brighter yellow? Well, let's try it. Why not, I say, why not? So I'm just gonna put this right on top of the little hat, and I'm gonna try to leave the tip white. I'm just gonna stroke this in in little circles.
try not to bear down too much if you've got um, a soft core pencil. You want to gently put the color on top in little circles. You don't want to make hard lines down with your the point, yeah? Uh, by doing it in, in this way, you're able to add layers which you would not otherwise be able to do. If you have ground uh, a pencil color down into the tooth of the paper, then the paper will no longer be able to accept more and uh, you won't be able to do any layering. So that's just food for thought. I was in the Facebook group earlier today and saw that Nancy uh, Pierce had said that she was really having live stream withdrawals. <laughs> I am too. And so we may, we may do something crazy. I, 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 I just don't know. I don't know. We may have to do it more than once a week. I don't, I don't know, guys. No. All right, just a few more. We'll blend these. Then we'll come in here with our graphite pencil and our white charcoal pencil and do some shading and highlighting in addition to. I think the flux and the poke root got along okay together. I think this is going to be really subtle color-wise. Which is going to be perfect. But enough of a color difference from what from the rust that I used on the flux. I think the biggest difference on the tinted graphite, uh, at least from what I'm trying uh, with um, maybe the sketch and wash and um, watercolor pencils is, is the subtlety, I think, of the color. This tends to be not, not dark and vibrant, but, but I have to say that there are times when not dark and vibrant are, are good. And uh, so, you know, you might want to try these out. Maybe you've got a brand that is different from these. Of course, I'm always willing to try stuff out if you want to send it to me. But uh, this is, this is um, pretty beautiful. I think with shading and, and such, we're going to have something very nice here. So let's give this a minute to dry. And we'll get back with it. Okay. This is pretty much dry, and uh, I am going to go ahead and add some graphite here. I'm going to put a little bit under this little cap, just to give a little bit of dimension.
I think my brain is on vacation today. I just don't have anything going on up there <laughs> at all. I'm just, yeah, kind of empty. Intellectually, that is. Mari went to visit an aunt today, so that's cool. I have some quiet that's unusual and lovely. Now, let's get after this. Now, some of this where it overlaps is going to be really important uh, to sort of keep in perspective what's where. Yes. For your eyes sake that is by enhancing the spots where where they overlap it it allows the, the eye to say okay this is on this level and this is on this level of course you don't want to listen to your eye too much or your brain too much because because uh your brain likes things to be the way it thinks things are and sometimes that's not what we're seeing and so we want to learn to look at what's actually there and not at what our brain thinks is there. Um, I saw something recently, um, I, it may have been a YouTube video, uh, where the guy said, it's like, it's like walking past a house, your brain registers that it's a house, but it doesn't register it's a two-story house with, you know, with a pretty yard or it's a one-story crap hole or, Whatever it is, um, that doesn't register. It's just you walked by a house and, you know. So um, it's interesting. Uh, it was an artist. That's who I was watching. It was one of the artists uh, that I occasionally um, watch. And um, she was saying that's, she was explaining, and we had talked about this on this channel uh, not too long where, where, where we were talking about why I draw upside down sometimes. And this is the reason it's because your, your, your brain can fool your eye into thinking something is a certain way when it is in fact not that way. And, um, it's, it's, so it's really important to start to see what is there. And that's why I turn my, my drawing upside down sometimes is because I want to work off of what I actually see and not what my brain thinks is supposed to be there. Right. Does that make sort of no sense at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I definitely think graphite here is going to help both sides let's see okay i'm just going to put a little bit along the side there Find my tortillon. Any tortillon. All right. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> I don't know anymore. All right. Well, let's blend out some of this and see where I missed some spots. Missed some there.
Definitely gonna need more graphite on this. Looking kind of wimpy. I might get out the sketch and wash and see if I can take some color from the tip of that and add it in for depth in a couple of spots. That might work. I'm not really getting the depth. Of course, it's hard for me to tell with the light the way it is. I don't feel like I'm getting the depth that I need uh, shading-wise to really make a big deal out of this. I mean, color-wise, it's nice. Um, let me hold this out at arm's length. Hold on. No, oh, this definitely needs more color. All right. Oh, here's my General's uh, Sketch and Wash pencil. Um, uh, I'm still getting to know this uh, tool, so so hopefully you will uh, you will be patient with me on this. Um, what I'm thinking of doing here, or trying, what I'm going to try, is I'm going to take my, get my napkin back, I'm going to take the, my aqua brush and load the tip up, it's damp, load the tip up with color and see if I can't And that's a lot darker than I was hoping for, but I'll lighten it up here in just a minute. Now it's getting nicer to use. Don't let that dry, Cindy. Seriously, don't let that dry. Let's pick some of that up before it gets to be a bigger problem than it is. Not my favorite thing, but it'll be all right. All right, let's see if we can maybe not have quite so much color on this. Okay, that'll work. All right, so I'm just gonna load a little bit up this time <laughs> and see if I can put some some shading in here. Just a little bit. Sort of deepen this um, base of the flux and go around any place where I've got some overlapping. Okay. 
Okay. Hopefully you can see this all right. I like this. It goes over the color really subtly if I can get the amount that I'm using under control. Like I said, these are fairly new tool, just like the tinted graphite. And so um, I'm exploring them uh, along with, oops, what happened here? What is that? But I'm, I'm exploring their qualities as I work here. And I kind of like, um, I know a lot of you said you did not like the care for the sketch and wash, but I kind of like um, being able to shade in this manner. I feel like I, I get less spread from graphite if I'm if I'm working like this and I practiced quite a bit doing this um, so again you, these are things you may want to try on scratch paper before you get going as you can see <laughs> there's a learning curve and I may come back with in with more color um, from the tinted graphite here and there but I'll want to wait till it dries to, before I make that choice. There we go. Again, these are all personal preference things, and you, of course, are welcome to do as you like. And regular graphite is going to work here just a little bit differently. And, you know, do what you think is, is good for you and the tools that you have available. Now, I haven't tried the tinted graphite off the tip like I do uh, everything else. We may have to give that a try here in just a second. Remember, if you get too dark, just clean off your brush and go right back in with your clean brush and just spread it out a little bit. The tinted graphite and the sketch and wash works very well together. That's always something you want to know. How does it work with my other, the other uh, media that I'm going to be using? So here's a good spot where I need to really darken in. So right here, where everything is overlapping, we want color down. I hope you're enjoying painting a little bit with me on this rainy Sunday. Sunday morning for me. Who knows what you guys got? I'm 
who knows when this will be uploaded. Oops. It was a lot too much. But luckily, I have that charcoal pencil. It's going to brighten these tips up perfectly. Remember, you want to keep the deepest color down in the tip and just feather a little tiny bit up into the other part. Well, I may definitely be firmly in the ugly stage here. <laughs> That's going to be all right, though. We're going to make it prettier. Even if we have to drag out some colored pencils, that's going to be all right. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, <clears throat> excuse me, that's definitely different and darker. Checking to make sure I've got all of my spots that overlap, having a little bit of color. We're going to have to do something, or I'm going to have to do something to sort of
juice it up, I think. I think I may need, um, I don't know. Let's put away the sketch and wash for now. And get out got something stuck to me. Big surprise, big surprise. Um okay, I'm gonna hold this out for a minute, just a minute. gotten a little muddy and the other thing I want to um, emphasize here is um, to be gentle with the tooth of your paper once you've gone over it a couple of times uh, with this or that uh, then uh, the tooth is going to be tired so on all of these so I'm gonna have to be gentle here on all of these where I added um, pencil or um, sketch and wash I'm gonna go over that now with my rust color. And I may or may not uh, blend this with water, it just depends. But I want the brown to sort of be on the top. The graphite part will still be underneath there. It just won't be as gray. So, Zenders, I would like to hear from you in comments. Um, how many live streams per week would you would you be happy with? What what um, what percentage of videos would you want to have live streamed as opposed to um, video? I know there are differing opinions about this, so I really want to hear from you guys with with both. Um, uh, and I want your honest opinions, right? Um, I do want to offer both to everybody. But I'm kind of curious to know uh, what percentage of the videos would you prefer to have live stream and which percentage you would prefer to have uh, recorded videos. So now we have depth and color and depth in our color. And so that I like. I like being able to go back over the top. Now, if your little orbs are getting all messy, don't worry about them, okay? We are going to brighten those up here in a minute. I haven't quite decided yet how I want to handle those. Um, okay, so I've done that. Now I've got my maze and I'm gonna go over my, this is the same color, yellow, uh, brownish yellow that I used on these before, and I'm just gonna darken the color. 
perhaps particularly in spots where uh, I might have a little too much gray. I think one of the dogs is itching and it sounds like somebody's walking in the house and since I'm here by myself it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Simba, you're freaking mommy out, bub. All right, now, I think I do want to activate this just a little bit on these to make sure it's smooth. I think the thing that interested me in these tinted graphites first was uh, a picture that Nancy had, um, or a piece of art that Nancy had posted, uh, Nancy Gregg had posted, and um, where the set, the shading and everything, the color was really, really extremely subtle. And so I think that's what first got me in, interested in these. And they certainly are subtle, they may be a little too subtle for me, but um, I will continue to use them where I feel like they have a purpose. Um, the next time I do something like this, I'm going to grab my uh, Prismacolor watercolor pencils and do one with those because, excuse me, because um, I'm curious uh, to know um, how those would behave differently or the same. Okay, I think the last thing I'm going to do beside, uh, before I put on my charcoal pencil is I'm going to take a different one of these uh, tinted graphite pencils. And I'm going to, this is the blueberry. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of color. I'm gonna stop at this white line. This is pretty much what they did in the project pack, but they used pastel pencils. And the pastel pencils are a very good, um, a good choice for this. But uh, since I am using, since I am wanting to use these tinted um, graphite pencils, then I am going to use these. Now I did do a swatch on the back to see uh, what was going to look decent with this. And again, I'm just using these little circles. Now I'm wanting to put down a lot of this color and because I know it's gonna be really subtle. So I'm trying to use plenty. Again, in these soft little circles, and I'm just following the outline. And in, in some ways, this is like adding an aura, just an aura of a soft swirl of color all the way around. I really want you guys to expand your thinking about auras. Uh, they don't just have to be lines. They can be lots and lots of other things. And this is definitely a nimbus of color, an aura of color. And I'm only going to put this on one side. You want it right on the line, but you don't want it over.
And once again, we have R in this. Any of you that have done adult coloring books, this, this stuff, it should be old hat for you. Now this little guy. All right. So, where's the water? Let's see what we end up with. I may want another another um, batch of that or another go for that. But don't get across the line, Cindy. Now the tan background is really settling this out. It's really um, keeping this from being too um, uh, bright and vibrant, if you will. It's, it's gonna be really, really subtle. So again, you know, work on those edges, keeping those edges nice and smooth and then work in to your color. And I do these little circles around the edges just to keep those soft. Aqua brushes are just the best thing ever. <laughs> That's just my opinion though. This is turning out to be perfect. Uh, it's extremely subtly blue. So it's almost like a cast shadow, but it's not. It's definitely colored. But I really like the, the subtlety that I'm able to create with these tinted graphite pencils. Thank you so much, Nancy. These are awesome. Really enjoying them. And they, they seem that like they might be really good companions for Zentangle. So if you don't have some, I will try to put a link for, for uh, tinted graphite pencils. I think I may have another kind on my um, Amazon store, but I'll see if I can can uh, find that or find these and add them. I, th I think uh, it's gonna be one of those things where you have to see what you like. Uh, these Spectrum Noir pencils are, are working really well for me. And look how subtle this is. All right, now, put the water away. Let this dry a moment. Then we're gonna add the white charcoal. Oops, I forgot something, didn't I? I did, I heard you yelling at me. I don't know which one of you it was, but somebody was. Was it Susan? Susan, were you yelling? No, I'm just kidding. I know you weren't. I want this to be really subtle. All right, I'm gonna grab my hair dryer real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So last step, a little white charcoal on the tips of everything. Yes. Gonna be our finishing touch. Okay. Just 
So this is based on the Zentangle Video Project Pack 11 Day 1. This is Cindy's version, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Everybody can do their own. You can do yours like mine. You can do yours like theirs. Or you can do yours like you want. Yeah, this looks pretty good. We're going to have to get some, get my uh, charcoal pencil sharpened here. be an itchy little bit. River says hi to all her puppy friends and never forgetting Mrs. Purrywinkle. <laughs> and who else? Cassandra the kitty and the black cat. What was it? Oh, Loki. We can't forget Loki. And who else can we say hi to? Don't forget Chip and ZZ. And Cashin and Caspian. Cute babies. And I have gotten to see them all. Uh, what are Layla's puppies' names? I can't remember. Layla, what are your puppies' names? Little flat faced babies. Not little pug faces. And, um,. Wren has a pretty baby. She has got uh, Malamutes. Gorgeous, gorgeous Malamutes. They are beautiful. Thank you for sharing those with me. I love seeing your puppy and kitty pals. I love pet pictures. At, in, in general, I'm a pet person. a little bit of highlight don't know if it makes sense where I'm putting it but I'm putting it there anyway there we go I don't know. <laughs> they may be on one side on one, the other side on the other, and I'm just going to hope nobody has the time to look at them individually. There we go. Now. Now we're cooking. So all I'm going to do now is take a tortillon and smooth some of these out.
There we go. Fun, fun, fun. Let me turn it on the side here. So you can see it all. Yeah. Let me take this off. I need one more thing to make this all complete. And that is a chop. So, I think I am going to put my chop. Mm, I think I'll put it right here. here all right this is where i am going to stop today i hope you have enjoyed this video i have missed making videos but i'm also missing the joy of the live stream so you're probably going to get a mix of both coming up i hope that is okay hopefully they will be released and uh happening at the same time each day which is 2 p.m two o'clock in the afternoon or 1400 in central time zone in the u.s that is the same as dallas and chicago and uh that is uh i believe we are at uh u utc minus five that is five hours behind the universal time uh stamp code so um that hopefully will help you figure things out and uh, i hope i am going to see you tomorrow for my next go at project pack 11 the tireless way yeah okay guys thanks for being with me today and i am going to see you tomorrow